you would recognize that there's something more important than the state. You would recognize that there's something more important than the United Kingdom. You would realize that as Christians, we don't believe that the individual is the foundation rock of society, but the family. We re don't recognize the parliament as the highest authority, but God's revelation. We recognize that God's law is what is binding on us, even if it contradicts the state law. And that if keeping God's law means breaking the laws of the state, then we become criminals and we celebrate the fact that we are criminals. We embody a, a, a motif of martyrdom for our faith, giving ourselves to the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of the United Kingdom. That means that we have a basis upon which to oppose Sharia law, a basis upon which to oppose the transgender ideology and the LGBTQ silent P ideology that's sending the world mad and driving us over a cliff. These are the things that if you were a Christian, you would be connected to. And that is exactly why the state has made you ignorant of these things. And I'm inviting you to reconnect with all of those things. And the, the, the first step on that journey begins with answering this question. Who do you think, who is Jesus Christ to you? Not to me, not to someone else, but to you personally. What's your name, brother? Ricky. Ricky, who is Jesus Christ to you, Ricky? Just a fictional character that's been yeah. made up. Right, okay. You think he's a fictional character made up? Yeah, no, I think there might, there, 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 there might have been someone... There might have been someone back in them times who... I don't know, for one reason or another, captured the imagination of a lot of people and a lot of stories have blown up around certain things, what he'd done and whatever, but overall it's just a load of old pony. You can't... From the very start it's flawed because straight away I think, well, hold on, who is his mum? Well, it's it Mary. Right, well, who is his dad? Well, Mary was a virgin. Oh, right. Uh, oh, okay. well, that, you know. so, so let me... Well, I just don't believe in religion. Let, 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 just... let, let me respond to that. Let me respond to that. Firstly, firstly, the, in terms of how we do history, the, the evidence for Christ's reality as a human person in history is insurmountable. It's insurmountable is not just testified to in independent biblical sources like Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, but he's also testified to in terms of non-Christian, Roman and Jewish sources like Josephus, like, um, like Suetonius, like, um, um, I can't think of a, a third one, like also oh, Clement of Rome, for instance, who, who's a Christian writing outside of the New Testament. All of these sources are first century, and they all speak about Christ as a human person in history, and the vast majority of them speak about Christ's crucifixion. Now, if Christ was crucified, immediately that disproves Islam. Immediately that disproves any religion that denies the crucifixion. But the reason why Christianity was started as a religion in the first place was that people who knew Christ had lived and died went on to proclaim that he had risen from the dead. And the thing is, if you know, what would convince you that a man who had died had come back to life? Um, I don't know, I suppose witnessing it for myself. There you I mean, go. You know, that's the only thing what can, isn't it? You know. Exactly. But the point is, back in there, as I said, they're, they're there very well may have been someone who sparked off people's imagination with this and that. Yeah. And he very well might have ended up getting crucified. Yeah. Because in them days, people did stupid things and made stupid decisions. You've only got to look at you've only got to look at the, the, the fact that there was witch finders who went up and down the country and if they wanted to earn a few extra quid, they said, that, that, she's a witch. But that was centuries and, you later. Know, they were like Burn that that that, that 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 what the example that you've given of witch burnings was something that happened in the thir um, 12th and 13th and 14th centuries and it only happened in a small pocket of Europe well, it didn't yeah. happen across Europe it didn't happen in the Eastern Orthodox Church 
and, and it's had actually got no relevance at all to what happened in the first century. Well, what I'm saying is people... Believe silly things. Well, believe silly things, and also they're capable of doing quite horrible things as yeah. well. So the, the fact that he was crucified is neither here nor there, because there might have been someone, and he very well might have been crucified. Well, the, the point is that the, the need, the, 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 the accuracy of the crucifixion is needed because without a crucifixion you have no resurrection. You know, there's no resurrection if nobody died, so somebody had to die. That's why you've got to talk about the crucifixion. And again, the evidence for the crucifixion is insurmountable. Like, it's, it's just overwhelming. Um, because as I, say, as I say, it's not just Christian sources that write about Christ's crucifixion, it's also non-Christian sources, like Josephus, like Suetonius, and so on. My point to you is this, that if, if the first Christians, I mean the very first, not, not the ones that came next because the apostles had told them, but the actual apostles themselves, they themselves had no paradigm to in which to believe that a single person would rise from the dead. They didn't have it. Do you understand what I mean by a paradigm? No. Right, so let me give you an example. So imagine you're in a field in the countryside and you see a bright lit saucer kind of shape floating across a field and then all of a sudden it zooms straight up at high speed and disappears into the night sky. What's the first thought that comes into your mind about what that was? First thing is you think, well, what the fuck was that? Well, yeah, and the next thought? Like, well, how do you answer that question? Where, where, where does your mind go to answer that question? There's no trick question here, it's just yeah, an honest... Yeah, sure. um, <laughs> a saucer. A flying saucer. Yeah, well, you just think, well, it must be something from outer space. There you go. Right, that's called a paradigmatic, a paradigmatic model. In other words, we have a place in our culture by which we understand illuminous saucer-shaped objects that fly defying gravity. And we stick them in the category of UFO. That, there was no box in first century Judaism for the idea of an individual rising from the dead. And yet, despite the absence of that paradigmatic matrix, the very first apostles went on to preach that a single person, their teacher, who they had seen crucified, had risen from the dead. And the, the, the question that you and every other person has to answer for themselves is why? Now for me, the answer to that question is because, just like you, when you said the thing that would convince me is that I would have to see it with my own eyes, well these first apostles saw it with their own eyes. Now, that what's interesting is in first century Judaism, there was a paradigmatic model of what you do when your teacher dies. You venerate his tomb. You go to his tomb, you turn it into like a, a, a shrine and you pray there and you, you go and you visit his tomb and you honor him. So if he had just died and stayed dead, the most Jewish thing to do would have been to go to his tomb and venerate his tomb like other people did to other teachers like they did to the prophets and Jesus was seen as a prophet you know but they didn't do that with Jesus's tomb and the reason why is because the tomb was empty how does a dead body leave a tomb someone must have took it someone must have took it who and why <laughs> right, so let's, let's, let's do, I'm going to be honest, like, let's look at your suggestion and let's treat it intelligently, right? Because I want to be fair to you. And all I ask in reciprocation for this is not that you come to a conclusion, is that you honestly consider the possibility that it was because a man rose actually from the dead. So let us assume that some grave robbers stole the body, right? We have two options. We either say it was someone other than the apostles that stole the body, or we say it was the apostles themselves that stole the body. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing about that is that we're admitting that the tomb was indeed empty. Right? We're admitting that. And actually, the Jews, in their opposition to the Christian Jewish movement, did spread exactly that rumour. They said that the apostles stole the body, which means that they were acknowledging the tomb was empty. But if the apostles stole the body, I'm sure you know that liars make poor martyrs. 
Would you die for something you knew you had made up? If I stuck a, like, let's say you spread a lie and this, this lie got you rich. And I stuck a gun to your head and I said, you, you, you either stop saying this or I'm going to blow your head out right now. Which would you rather do? Continue the lie and me blow your brains out or say, okay, I made it all up and go off. Which would you do? I'd rather admit to it. And... Exactly. Do you think people 2000 years ago were any different when confronted with death? But yet we know that many early Christians like Stephen, like James, like Peter, like Paul, were martyred for their faith that Christ had risen from the dead. So martyrs, liars make poor martyrs. So we know this from that. We know that they genuinely believed what they believed. Now, let us look at the other example, the idea that some rogues, some vagabonds, we don't even know their names, stole the body. If they stole the body, we still have to answer the question, why did Mary, why did Paul, why did Peter, why did the other apostles believe that Christ had risen from the dead and go out and preach that? If they saw that their leader had died, but they had no connection to the stealing of the body, then why did they come to believe that Christ had risen from the dead? So either way, we're still confronted with the fact that they genuinely believe that Christ had risen from the dead. And that is an evidence to the fact that that resurrection is true. That it's real. That it was a real experience. Yeah. Now, you've never heard this argument before, have you? No. You've never heard this discussion before, have you? No, no, I don't think so. Right, and the reason for that is because society doesn't want you to believe. Liberal Western society does not want Christians because Christians get in the way of liberal Western society. We don't go along with the trans agenda. We don't go along with the LGBTQ silent P agenda. We don't go along with Islamization. We don't go along with nationalism. We don't go along with um, hating people for the color of their skin or because they're the wrong nationality. So we're an awkward thing for the liberal enlightenment. And so they want and have successfully disconnected you and everyone else from ever thinking about this topic. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I, I agree with, I agree with that. They're actually, I think, I think the church is actually coming round to accepting a lot of the nonsense. Yeah, yeah, the old GB. Yeah, and, and, and when we say and the church, what we really mean is the Church of England. Yeah, and even then, when we say the church, we only mean parts of the Church of England. What we don't mean is the full body of Christ. Every, nearly every Christian, in fact, every Christian I know in this park rejects all of that. And Christians are going to prison for it. Christians are being prosecuted for this belief. Like, we're having, we're, 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 we're Christians are losing the right to adopt because of this belief. So we're opposing the gods of this world, but everyone in our society is encouraged to bow to the gods of this world. The gods of self, the God of the NHS, the God of the British Army, the God of multiculturalism, the God of unthinking tolerance. These are the gods of our world and to wit we Christians say, no, burn them all. Christ has risen and in Christ is true life. Yeah. Anyway. What's your name? Ricky, isn't it? Ricky, yeah. Ricky, I want to give you a gift. Sorry, who are you? Bob. Bob, that's right. Bob of yeah, Speaker's right. Corner. Let me give you a gift, Ricky. It'll be something small. You can stick it down the front of your, your coat. Have you got a gospel at home? Like, let me give you one. And what I would like to invite you to do is just have a read of it. Right. Have a read of it. And I might do. When I, when I can't get to sleep properly, yeah, yeah. I'll open the page and it'll do, do the job. Reading does help people sleep, including me. But um... I feel that might have been a slight... A slight attempt at a backhanded insult, but no, I'll not. take it. Yeah. Here you go, bro. Anyway, it is interesting to see... Have a read of that. It is interesting to see, to listen to different people's views on things and whatever. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but no, I don't think I'll ever be persuaded that there is a god or blah blah blah. Oh, just I really believe we're, we're, we're just an animal, we've evolved, and that's it. I can't answer all the questions where we've evolved from, how we're this or that, but it just seems common sense to me that you know we're we have evolved. We were born because my mum and dad, I was born because my mum and dad wanted me. Yep. I'll die just like everyone else and every other animal on the earth. I be, people, as, a, as a Christian, I believe in evolution as well. I've got no, no objection to evolution. To that. And, so, and so many people seem to believe in a religion because they're worried about dying. And I just think, you know, I don't want to die. Yeah. I don't, I don't stress out over it, but I'm obviously getting on a little bit now. So it does cross your mind now and then. I wonder how it's going to end up. Or whatever. But the reality the the day, is nothing I can do. About the reality it. is the the, so. the the big Christians organise themselves by different questions. You know, the the Western modern world tells us to think about our career, getting a wife, having children, doing, getting money, accumulating experiences, becoming rich. Those are the questions that the Western liberal world invites us to organise our lives around. Christianity, Christians organize their lives around different questions. We organize the questions around tr questions of truth and questions of virtue. And it, it leads to a very different style of life. And the reality is that ultimately everyone who dies, and we, we, are, we are all going to die. That says, you know, I believe it. That's what the Bible teaches. Everyone is going to die. And, and the reality is that it's only in the confrontation of death that people ask themselves more serious questions. More serious questions than what liberal society encourages us to ask. And the reality is, if you had based your life around questions more fundamental than the ones offered to us by Western society, you would have lived and can still live a more meaningful and richer life. And that's the, that you know, Christ said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free so that you might have life and have it to the full. That, that, you know, life is a banquet and the Western liberal world is starving because all we do is pursue material questions and material answers. But life is more than material questions and material answers. There are deep spiritual, non-corporeal realities that govern our lives like what is truth love as the highest virtue like what is the highest virtue these are questions that you can't stick in a test tube or a bottle you can't experiment on them there's no substance that you can make out of them and yet they are real questions that have real impacts on life and christians engage with that without chucking away science we're not anti-science christians gave birth to science and so when you read that gospel, think about it in that way, that it's presenting to you different questions than the ones you've currently considered and giving you questions that you could reorganize your life around. All right. All right. Ricky, yeah, lovely to speak you. with you. Have a lovely day. I've kept you long enough because apparently there's a racist bloke over there. Yes, yes. He's called Uncle Omar. We've got him on camera calling black people. Really? Yeah, very much so. What colour is he? Uh, he's he's from the Middle East. He's oh, from right. the Middle East, I think. He went and fought with the Taliban, apparently. I don't know if that's true. Oh, well. Thanks a lot. All right, then. God bless.